A Wall Street Journal investigation into Donald Trump's business career finds the GOP presidential nominee sometimes dealt with people connected to organized crime in his Atlantic City and New York real estate work. Joining us now to discuss is WSJ investigative reporter Michael Rothfeld. Hi, Michael. Great to see you. Hi, Tanya. First off, if you would give us a little bit of the story behind the story. How long did this investigation take? How many reporters were involved and who did you talk to? Uh, well, it was uh, primarily me and Ali Burzon, a reporter uh, who works for us in California. We spent several months looking at documents, talking to people, kind of digging into various business associates of Donald Trump going back to probably late 70s, early 80s, and up through the present. Wow, exhaustive. And then you found that in the early 80s, when an ambitious young Donald Trump was looking to extend his business into Atlantic City, he did have a sit-down meeting with FBI agents about it, correct? And what came out of that meeting? That's right. Well, he was looking to open a casino in Atlantic City, New Jersey. He had uh, primarily been working with his dad developing properties in New York City, and he wanted to know what kind of risks my dad's business has a reputation, and I don't want to jeopardize that by going into Atlantic City. So he had someone he had met uh, in Atlantic City who was an FBI informant, a guy named Dan Sullivan, who was a teamster, and he introduced Trump to these FBI agents. Oh, and the FBI agent said, you know what, Mr. Trump might be better to stay out of Atlantic City, right? Yeah, they said, you know, there's a lot of kind of shady people uh, doing business down there, and the mob has some influence, and so there might be a better ways you could invest your money if you're worried about your reputation. Because this was Atlantic City in the 80s, and among builders, it was widely known that it was almost impossible to go down there without getting your hands at least a little dirty, it seems. That's right. At the beginning, banks wouldn't even really uh, work down there, so it was something people stayed away from, but Donald Trump uh, went forward forward nonetheless. He did. And you found some specific people that he dealt with. I'm going to start with the first, who is a man described by prosecutors as an agent of the Philadelphia mob. Is that right? Right. This was a guy named Ken Shapiro, and he was a scrap metal dealer in Philadelphia. And uh, he also worked with the Philadelphia mob and the mob boss at the time, Nikki Scarfo, who they called Little Nikki. And he and the other gentleman I just mentioned, Dan Sullivan, the teamster who knew Trump, owned a piece of property together. And uh, Trump needed it to build his first casino, so they leased it to him. All right, so then you also found a connection later around the same time with a gambler who was con convicted of tax fraud? Right, that was a gentleman named Robert Labuti. He was what's known as a high roller, and he basically spent a lot of money at the casinos. He was a horse trader. He was uh, banned from race uh, racetracks in New York State. And uh, he, uh, Trump, got to know him because, you know, you know who your big customers are who are bringing a lot of money into your casinos. Yeah, you found he personally spent $11 million in the Trump casinos? That's right, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and uh, so Trump, uh, I gave him some cars, and that those were... Um, turned into cash pretty quickly. And they did have a personal relationship. His daughter confirmed that Trump attended one of her birthday parties, Yeah, correct? she told Yahoo News that um, she, when I, I went out to New Jersey to interview her, but she kind of ran into her garage when I uh, oh, went to talk to her. Oh, really? So she, uh, she, she did tell Yahoo News that, that, uh, that Trump went to her birthday party. Okay, and then you also found there was a connection with a union leader who was convicted of racketeering as well? Right. Well, uh, in the construction industry in general, um, you know, to be fair, uh, the, the the mob controlled a lot of the right. construction trades in New York, um, and basically in that time period. So, if you're a developer, you kind of it's hard to avoid them. And they control the cement uh, companies, the concrete companies, and but also the unions. But some builders and developers, as you pointed out, would use a middleman, and Trump didn't like doing. Right. It. Well, the general contractor would normally deal with some of those people, like the uh, the the guy you're referring to, John Cody, was. A, a Teamsters leader whose uh, workers delivered cement to the construction sites, and so he would uh, threaten. He was later convicted of racketeering, and he was uh, tied. He had close relationships with Carlo Gambino and Paul Castellano, who were mafia leaders in New York. And so he would threaten the developers with calling a strike if they didn't do what he wanted. Um, and Trump, you know, dealt with him directly also as well. And then more recently, he had dealings with a real estate developer who was convicted of some sort of stock fraud that was connected to the mafia? Right, this was a guy named uh, Felix Sater, and Trump uh, in, around, in the 2000s uh, started a re relationship with this company called Bayrock Group, and they developed a number of buildings. Basically, Trump started uh, branding, using his name for branding on buildings where he wouldn't build them, but he would lend his name and then get an ownership stake. So Bayrock did that with uh, Trump Soho and some other buildings. And Felix Sater worked there. Sater had um, 
been convicted uh, in the early 90s uh, in a bar fight and lost his license as a stockbroker, and then later um, was involved in a pump and dump scheme that the mafia was involved in. They provided protection. Pump and dump is when you drive up the prices of stocks and then you uh, sell them after people buy them. So you, you make money that way, and the mafia was offering protection for that. So Sater had relationships there, and then he went to work uh, with Trump at Bayrock. After that, right. right. Okay, so now did you ask Trump about each of these connections, and what did he say? Yeah, we did. Um, I mean, generally speaking, he says that uh, either he didn't know uh, about the connections or uh, if he knew that there might have been a story. Um, he didn't really have a close relationship with them, but primarily he's a businessman, and so, you know, he wasn't running for office at the time. He didn't feel like there was anything that compromised him and, you know, kind of he had to work with certain right. people. He said that some of the mob con uh, tied construction companies were very good at uh, doing concrete. They could do three floors in a week. Right. So, you so know. he didn't express any regret over these. No, not at all. He said, I'm the cleanest guy there is, uh, in fact. And, you know, he when I was in his office and talking to him, he had his kids in there. Um, he had Ivanka in there and, you know, said, Ivanka, have you ever seen any mobsters in my office and um, you know she was like no I've never seen any mobsters in your office so <laughs> it was a family meeting yes yeah. <laughs> exactly you um, got into the inner sanctum <laughs> yeah yeah his son Eric said the same thing I've never seen any mobsters in your office um, so there you have it Michael. yeah thank you so much all right Great thank work. you thanks for having me